what the model of business proving really is. It's a push-based service interface, right? You're proving the operations, you can declare your message types, font types, more parts, and you have a set of operations in them that are defined by a message exchange pattern, right? I might have input only, an input output, so request response, or an input only operation with a potential callback or type. So what we wanted to enable with EDN was actually this notion of being able to really use a top sub concept. And in the first iteration, a couple of points that you should know if you already have worked with 11G or heard much about the 11G as a platform. So first of all, um, it's really, really useful and it's based on VDL rather than this tool. We believe this is great to define services and operations. It's not so good, uh, great to define data shapes only without you forcing you into one or the other standards goal that we don't use eventing or WS notification. Um, the cool thing here is you really work with events. You work with shapes of data. You don't work with a messaging backbone. Of course, you can use JMS adapter. You can use JMS semantics. At that point, you have to care about message selectors. You have to, uh, to care about message types. You have to care where the box is, the JMS infrastructure. We really want to extract all of that from you. The other thing is it really doesn't only work with SOA. So in the context of source suite and the composite, but it really works outside. So you can have, for example, a DDF business component raise an event. Or PLC call, if you're in the database and want to trigger off the composite, reliably, with a security, you can do that via event. Today, in the release, we just shipped the leverage on one. It's backed by advanced QA. However, with the move to off pluggability on the database layer as well as on the application server level, uh, it will be pluggable JMS. So dependent on which server you are and which type of uh, dehydration server you are, you're either sitting on advanced QA or backed by, for example, that logic JMS. And Greg already talked about that. We spent a decent time of effort to uh, work with other uh, companies together in the eventing in the body for SCA to get that being standardized. And that's another uh, term presentation not published. So what can you do with this event? Uh, right? They publish. They never publish. They never publish. So you can order by uh, in DVD. I'm a fan of this guy. I am taking video. I'm a fan of this guy. I'm taking video. Why? I met this guy. From your country? No, he is from Austria. Yeah, German. And this is reliable and even more bit secure. So here's what um, it looks like in Enterprise Manager because we figured if we give you events, we want to make sure you can track them exactly the same way you can track composite invocations and you can track fire invocations. The last thing we wanted to do is say, okay, we extracted finally a message bus, but really at the end of the day, you can't track it. So it's the same tracking, the same assets that walk around to make uh, composite to composite invocation seeable, viewable, and trackable. Good news here, and that's what you likely uh, did not know about in the end, it's really not just for mediator. It works across composite and not just intercomposite, and we bubble the security subjects along. So if I submit this event as comment, once the event on the subscribing side kicks off an instance of mediator, kicks off an instance of people, it will run as comments. We persist in our uh, subject hey, and we re authenticate the kickstart. Uh, uh, last but not least, it really works in people too. We have enhanced the people model itself because people uh, are everybody who is familiar with people. With the you always can always connect to what is called a partner link. Right? You walk against a partner link, you receive yeah, the then, uh, you a message. So you uh, uh, send and receive are independent. We will be able to invoke, that is publish an event, and receive or own message against an event. So that is subscribe to an event. And that's um, part of Oracle's uh, offering. Yeah. It's not standard, but we work for eventually going forward to get this into the specs as well. And as I already told you, it's based on EQ uh, and or JMS, so it's really reliable. This is not some in-memory thing. If your box goes down, you lose it. Let me show you a little bit of that. So here's J developer 11G. I just created a brand new composite. As you see, it's empty. And so what I want to do is actually create a people process. Very, very simple. I say yes, it's folded a soap service, an input and output. And now I go into my uh, SOA tier, yeah. and you see I can Fast. create an event definition. And my event definition gets a name in the first place, and underneath I can, uh, I can define events. So I pick 
an element definition. In this case, to make it simple, I'll just take the element definition for a process input. The process type elements, give this a name. Um, and from that point on, it's really known to the composite of what I can do, and I already ta talked a little bit about that. I can take a mediator, and my mediator can be based on a whistle or a message exchange pattern, but can also be based on an event. So here, I just go and pick my event. And what you see here now is this nice little neat event bubble. And if you look into the source of the composite, you see here at the mediator, we declare business events with a subscription. That's uh, the type of the event, name, with, of course, a namespace, a consistency. I want to have this once and only once guaranteed and run as roles. We want to run this not as any limits, but rather as the publisher of the event. So here comes security into play. The same thing works for other people as well. Is that XML? Is that the EDL? So this is the composite XML, right? This defines your other shell composite. The EDL is here. And if you look into the EDL, but it, it looks fairly much like a, a whistle. If, uh, if you look fairly close, right? You have a schema import that would, would correspond to either a display import or a schema location import based on a namespace. And then I have what we call event definitions with content. It's fairly alike to the idea of having a message type and a part. However, the content is a single part. It's not the idea of having multi-part messages and all that stuff, right? Thank you. Sure. So what I can do here is I can create an invoke, drag and drop. And what you see here, my interaction type, right? You would be uh, very much used to just firing it up and you get the partner link and everything is great. But what you also can do is just pick an event here. And in this case, of course, you pick the event, create a variable, and off you go. And the same thing works also on the inbound side. So I can either kickstart a process with an event, or I can continue a process with an event. It's a very, very powerful feature. And one thing that we are working on, because the third part that Greg kind of did not talk about, is also a little bit where we go in the future. So um, an interesting idea is to have notification type events. So I have an order system, right? And my order system sends out periodically events on its order status, like um, how many items do I have in stock and whatnot. Today, people is very much centered around this idea of the instance, and the instance being something you need to correlate in to go and continue. I want to have sort of a correlationless experience where I just say I have a generic subscription and just notify all instances that are out there. So that's something we are working on as well. All right. <coughs> Oracle Human Workflow, Greg already described, is really a part of the SOA infra. It's a first class citizen, extremely powerful when it comes to approvals, when it comes to multi-chain approvals, and also when it comes to interaction with humans in general. Thorsten Winterberg actually sits in the car, and he talks about what you can do with the work list in terms of having not just an async model of I publish tasks, and I create tasks out of my processes, but how can I make the user actually have a synchronous uh, request response experience that would guide through the process. For, uh, for you guys, what you should already know, it's a part of the SOA infra. And the workflow forms use GSF now, Java server fit. In 10.3, so um, the current production release, before we released 11 gr one we generated a ton of GSV code, tons and tons of script left, when you went from the human task definition to uh, create the UI form. Today, we don't generate any more code. Um, we have rich client support because we live on top of ADF bases, and we use what is called the data binding behind the scenes. So as you have data controls, for ADF business components, for AGVs, for web services, we also implemented a data control for the human task. So you're in the same world that you can just dynamically mesh bits and pieces together in the UI if you need them. We still support pluggable identity providers. Today, we sit on top of what is called the Oracle Platform Security Services, the JPS implementation where you can plug in your security provider, as you can do in Capital 3. And one thing that we added is really complex value. Human workflow is used in Oracle Fusion applications, and for everybody who uses the applications, um, you might be familiar with what it's called EMP, the approval management engine today. And this guy is actually very, very complex. I mean, you can have multi-stage approvals, forward-looking approvers, get a list of forward approvers, and also dynamically add approvals. So in order to make Oracle Human Workflow a foundational Fusion app, 
we really